once you have enchanting prepared, either by taking a source version and building the back end and importing the latest code into the front end, or just by using an end user version, there are three ways to run it, and there's a page about that on the wiki. So the easiest way is here in the main folder, there's an enchanting.app or enchanting.exe, or, um, well, I don't have a direct one for Linux yet. Uh, we'll have to figure out how to do that. And you just run it. And this runs enchanting. You can see that this flag is good. If I click on the NXT to see the status, the front end is properly communicating with the back end. If we want to um, take a look at the activity monitor, which shows you which processes are running, we're going to look at all the processes in a hierarchy, and somewhere in here we're going to find enchanting. Okay, here we go. There's Bash, here's Java, and here's enchanting. So this Java is the back end of our application, and enchanting is the front end of the application running. In any case, we can quit that. So, that works. You can now, you know, make your programs and put them up on your robot and it should work just fine, assuming, of course, that your robot's connected. So that's one way, and we'll quit. The second way is the verbose method, and you can do this on Windows, on the Mac, and on Linux. And you just double click on that. And here I can see, here's the Java application, and it is running the front end. In fact, it's been designed so that as soon as the front end quits, the back end quits. And there's all sorts of messages going on here. For example, I can see it, it uses a concept of things called messengers. The enchanting messenger is attempting to reconnect. That connects between the back end and enchanting. The scratch messenger is attempting to reconnect. Well, that attaches to Scratch, and I can show you that too. The NXT messenger is attempting to connect. Well, that connects to the NXT. I'll just turn my NXT on here, and we should see that the NXT messenger is listening for messages. Ah, oh, there we go. Found an NXT. NXT messenger is listening for messages. Likewise, if I were to start, start Scratch, or a derivative of Scratch, I can go to the sensing blocks here, and on the, um, which one is it, sensor button pressed, I can right click, enable remote sensor connections, it says they are now enabled, and the Scratch messenger is listening for messages, and that allows me to send messages between Scratch to the back end, to enchanting, and thus to the robot. Things aren't fully uh, implemented there yet, but it does in fact work. In any case, I can quit Scratch, and here, as soon as I quit the front end, the process completes in the back end, and it exits, and it's done. The last way to run things is to go to the front end directory. This is not how you normally run it as an end user. Only a developer would want to run it this way. I will run the enchanting front end here. You can see here that the enchanting front end is not communicating with the back end. It communicates over a socket. So here I have a command prompt in the back end directory. And there are a couple of bash scripts in this folder. Uh, Let's see, the one I'm interested in is called run, or run.bat for Windows users. So I can just go dot slash run. Incidentally, if you supply a command to it, it will run that program. And that's how it runs the front end. And you see that these changed. It is now connected. It also found the NXT and is connected to that. And, uh, you know, I can just go on my merry way and create a program.
Also, what's interesting in running things this way is you can quit the back end. I'll go Control C. It's quit. You see that the connection has been lost. And if I run it again, this will reconnect. And likewise, I can quit the front end and the uh, back end continues running independently, which is very handy for development purposes. All right. Hope you know everything there is to know now about running enchanting. Thank you.